Hello, my name is Chukwu Makielendu, and I'm a PharmD candidate of the class of 2022. And I'll be speaking to you about the medication Rivaroxaban Xarelto. Rivaroxaban is a direct oral anticoagulant medication targeting the factor 10A clotting factor. Indications for Rivaroxaban include atrial fibrillation, coronary artery disease, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, superficial vein thrombosis, venous thromboembolism, and venous thromboembolism prophylaxis. For patients taking Rivaroxaban in doses higher than 15 milligrams, it should be administered with food. And for those taking it with doses of 2.5 and 10 milligrams, it can be taken without regard to meals. For non-valvular atrial fibrillation, it should be administered in the evening with a meal, and for patients who cannot swallow the tablet whole, the tablet may be crushed and mixed with applesauce immediately prior to use. Common side effects of Rivaroxaban include syncope, paritis, wound secretion, abdominal pain, dizziness, insomnia, back pain, and limb pain. The mechanism of action for Rivaroxaban is through inhibiting platelet activation and fibrin clot formation via direct selective reversible inhibition of factor 10A in both the intrinsic and intrinsic coagulation pathways. Factor 10A is part of a prothrombinase complex that catalyzes the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin, and thrombin both activates platelets and catalyzes the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Formulations for rivaroxaban include oral tablets of the strengths 2.5, 10, 15, and 20 milligrams. Dosage for rivaroxaban in individuals with atrial fibrillation is an oral dosage of 20 milligrams once daily in the evening with meals. Those with acute coronary syndrome, it is 2.5 milligrams twice daily, which is administered in the combination with low-dose aspirin plus clopidogrel for a span of one year. And for those with coronary artery disease or the peripheral artery disease, it is 2.5 milligrams twice daily administered in combination with low dose aspirin. For patients taking rivaroxaban for heparin induced thrombocytopenia, they are dosed at 15 milligrams twice daily with food for 21 days or until platelet count recovery, which or whichever one is longer, followed by 20 milligram once daily with food. Those taking rivaroxaban for venous thromboembolism, the dosage is 15 milligrams twice daily with food for 21 days, followed by 20 milligrams once daily with food. And those taking rivaroxaban for venous thromboembolism prophylaxis, it is 10 milligrams once daily for a total of duration of 31 to 39 days. Serious side effects for those taking rivaroxaban include hemorrhage, gastrointestinal hemorrhage, angioedema, and drug withdrawal induced stroke and non CNS embolism. Patients taking rivaroxaban with renal impairments for acute coronary syndrome with a CRCL below 30 milliliters per minute should avoid use. Coronary artery disease or peripheral artery disease of CRCL above 15 milliliters, no dose adjustment is required, but should be uh, watched if there is severe impairment. And CRCL below 15 milliliters should avoid use. And taking it for non-valvular atrial fibrillation, if the CRCL is above 50 milliliters per minute, there's no dose adjustment. But if it's between 15 and 50, it should only be given at 15 milligrams once daily with food. But if it's below 15 milliliters per minute, should avoid use entirely and try taking a Pixaban or Warfarin instead. Patients with renal impairment and taking Rivaroxaban for a PCI stent and atrial fibrillation should don't have to worry about dose adjustments if their CRCL is above 50, but anything between 30 and 50, only 10 milligrams once daily with food in combination with Clilibril is advised. With uh, For those taking it for venous thromboembolism, a CRCL above 30, no dose adjustment is required, but between 15 and 30, 
it should avoid use and below 15 it should also avoid use and those taking it for venous thromboembolism prophylaxis anything above 30 for their crcl no dose adjustment is required and anything in between 15 and 30 or below 15 it should also be avoided of use patients with mild impairments and child pew class scores of a do not need any dose adjustments with but with moderate to severe hepatic impairments and child pew scores of B or C, use should be avoided. Warnings and precautions for patients taking rivaroxaban, premature discontinuation of any oral anticoagulants, including rivaroxaban, increase the risk of thrombotic events. Missed dose patients should take the dose immediately to ensure rivaroxaban is administered per day and resume therapy the following day as previously taken. An increase in heart rate of strokes was observed during transition between rivaroxaban to warfarin. And patients should avoid rivaroxaban with surgically implanted mechanical heart valves. Monitoring parameters for patients taking rivaroxaban include renal function and CBC prior to initiation when clinically indicated and at least annually in all patients. Routine anticoagulation testing is not required for patients taking direct oral anticoagulants. Coagulation tests such as PT, INR, and APTT cannot definitively exclude the presence of clinically relevant serum concentrations. So recent creatinine clearance and time since the last dose was adjusted is usually sufficient assessment of anticoagulant effects.